Hi, welcome to today's segment of Arventura TV. My name is George Alger, and today we're going to be talking about portrait painting with a portrait artist, Johanna Spinks. Welcome, Johanna. Thank you, George. It's a pleasure to be here again. It's great to have you. Many people in Ventura know you because of the Face of Ventura mm -hmm. uh, series that you did, but perhaps you could just give us a thumbnail sketch of your work as an artist. Sure. Um, well, I've been a professional portrait artist for about 20 years now, and I've been very lucky to paint all sorts of people from all walks of life, um, bishops, actors, children, um, and, you know, I take each one very seriously. Uh, it's been quite a ride and quite a joy for me. Uh, my mentor is um, Everett Raymond Kinsler, who just celebrated his 90th birthday uh, in August. He has painted seven American presidents in his lifetime, all of them alive when he painted them, and uh, has numerous pieces um, in the Smithsonian. So I feel, you know, um, a privilege to be doing this, and I feel a legacy um, about it, and I now mentor other people, um, and it's, you know, it's, to me, it what, it's what makes me get up in the morning. Good. And for those who may not have encountered the Face of Ventura, could you just give us an overview of that? Absolutely. Well, the Face of Ventura was a public portrait project that started in 2010 in conjunction with the Ventura Breeze newspaper and Sheldon Brown, the publisher. And we picked people from the town, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, and Kevin Costner and a few people like that. <laughs> they were painted from life in um, a two-hour sitting, uh, no more than a two-hour sitting. And then their life story was printed with that sketch. So you not only got um, who this person was, where they came from, what they did in life, but you also got what they thought about Ventura, you know. So it was a real slice of, of the town that was captured. Um, Food Share, Bonnie Weigel, CEO of that um, group, also came on board towards the end and uh, funded a show at the uh, museum's pavilion um, center there. So it truly became a sort of collaborative effort. Lynn Fairley, uh, the, the radio host of the Lynn Fairley and Friends show, also interviewed the sitters. So, you know, it was a multimedia kind of event towards the end and um, really a very special time in my life, yeah. So, mm, incredible experience, actually. I think you won uh, an award for that as well. Well, um, I won Artist in the Community in 2012, and I'm, I'm sure that the face of Ventura was, you know, had, had a large amount to do with that. Um, I never really saw it as my project. It was, you know, definitely um, a collaborative effort, and I think, in a sense, that's what caught the imagination of the town. Cool. Now you've actually taken this series and are creating it elsewhere. Yes. Let's talk about that. And I'm, I'm delighted to share that with the, with the viewers because I have been asked, you know, sometimes by people, well, what happened and, you know, what did you do next? Um, as the face of Ventura was finishing, um, I had this idea to take it to another town, which I was actually very scared about doing as an artist because I think it's really hard to repeat something that has, you know, had legs of its own and just flown. You can never guarantee that twice. So I, I, I took the, I jumped in and decided to p paint the face of Malibu with the Malibu Times. And we are now four years into that project. It's moved at a slower pace um, than with the Ventura Breeze. Uh, but we hit sitter number 50 this December, which I'm incredibly excited about. Um, and it's been much the same concept. Uh, and, and being just as delightful, you know, to explore a new town through my portrait brush. Then I decided about a year ago to take it to another town, so I approached um, the Charleston Mercury in the south, and uh, they have taken on the series, and we started that in January of this year. So, so skip across the, <laughs> all the way across the country. Yes, and I'm actu actually just about to fly back into Charleston in um, October, and how we're doing it there, you know, because of the, the distance, I do six sitters back to back, you know, in, over six days, and it's quite something. Cool. <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the art of portraiture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can you just, you know, for those who have inclin inclinations towards portrait painting, is, is there some key concepts that you might be able to convey in just a, you know, a short format like we have? 
Yes, well, um, you know, portraiture is as relevant today as it was 500 years ago. And I've been asked about that, you know, in the age of the selfie and all this sort of, you know, immediacy of art and, and social media. What's the point of, of sitting there and, and doing a portrait from life? I think it is still incredibly relevant. And I think the public portrait projects have shown people um, that uh, there is something to it. You know, you catch a, a special moment between the sitter and the artist um, painting from life. So I would say, you know, if, if somebody was thinking about um, going into portraiture or developing um, their portrait skills, paint from life, you know, get sitters in front of you. We all do, of course, have to work from photographs. It's the nature of the beast. Um, I painted the official portrait of the uh, Bishop of South Carolina last year, you know, and that's a two month portrait for me. It's life size. Obviously, I'm going to be working from some photographs because, you know, he, he doesn't have time to sit for me for that period of time. But I would make sure on the initial, um, you know, run in that I have a sitting with him, which I did. Um, there is a very special thing to doing this, and it will improve your skill set above and beyond anything else. You know, life painting is the biggest teacher of all. Cool. Yeah. Now, you have something that you wanted to show us. Well, um, I was going to actually share, I'd love to share this picture of Howard Burroughs. He, okay. was, he was one of the, the um, people that I met through the face of Ventura. He was the second um, sitter for the face of Ventura, and uh, he passed away very sadly um, in August. And um, yeah, this, this is one of the joys of, of what I do. We became friends, and um, in the fall of last year, I painted a portrait of Howard at his residential home in five sittings. We did it life-size. So it was quite a sight to see me schlepping this big, large canvas in. And uh, anyway, the, the, the Museum of Ventura County just took that uh, large portrait into its permanent collection. And this one is also in that collection. Uh, but yes, I wanted to just give a, a little nod to Howard. Um, he was an incredible man, a bioscientist, a big philanthropist in, in Ventura. He has a wing at the museum, a garden wing, named after him and his wife, Evelyn. And uh, he will definitely go down as one of the most amazing people I've ever met. We, we had lots of teas together, lots of lunches together. Um, and I know a, a big part of Ventura misses him too. So I wanted to share Howard, um, Howard with the folks watching. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's comment on the art of portraiture a little bit further. Now, is there anything you'd like to say about the specific media or is, you know, in terms of portraiture, do you find, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I think all mediums are, are welcome. Um, I p paint primarily in oil. I love the smell of it. I love, I'm, you know, I'm a messy, sloppy painter and I love all of that. I'm, I'm usually covered in paint during the day. Um, but I do like, uh, you know, pastel, watercolor. I think it's all very valid. Uh, the most important thing as an artist, including being a portrait artist, is just to give it your time. Um, you know, we, we live in such an age of, of being bombarded by images every day of what other artists are doing and, you know, how their Instagram accounts have blown up and how they're on the cover of this, that magazine and the galleries are knocking. I, I believe that, that you know, time is the one thing that the artist has in their control and t your time should be um, you know use that time so wisely that's what I try and wake up and do um, for myself um, and I heard about this concept through a wonderful book that's that's out called Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert and uh, she interviewed um, the photographer who did the who is doing the Humans of New York photographic mm. project and they talked about this concept of controlling your time. That's all you really have control of um, as an artist, whatever the art form, writing, uh, music. And it just really has resonated with me and has helped me this year a lot to, to just focus on the, the best thing I can do in my art to improve it, to make it more authentic, is controlling the time. You know, making sure that you do a master drawing a day, copy, um, set the time or do half an hour, just continue to, to search and seek the area of art that you're involved in, whether it be landscape painting, still life, or, you know, contemporary artists as well. It's all valid. Yeah. Cool. Could you comment on the relevance or not of being a portrait artist and also 
trying to interpret the likeness of a person in a way that, well, needs to be or is going to be like that person. Yes. Right. That's a really good question. Artists like Lucian Freud, uh, the, uh, probably Britain's most famous portrait artist who passed away a couple of years ago, he painted the Queen and he did probably the ugliest painting of the Queen and it was 12 inches by 12 inches. That was his style. He painted ugly portraits of people and he was famous for it and he earned more money than I'm ever going to earn by getting a very accurate likeness of my sitters. That was his thing, you know. I think his paintings sold for 20 million plus, I mean 120 million perhaps even. Um, so from where I'm sitting, I, I do want to get a likeness of my sitters and I work hard for that. I have to keep my skill set up for that. If I don't continually work at it, I'm not as sharp. Um, so it is important for me to get a likeness, but also there are times um, when you can get less of a likeness. So I paint from life every week, uh, whether I'm doing a real life sitter or, or a friend or whatever. Um, um, for instance, last night I was doing a, a public art demo for the San Fernando Valley Art Club. Uh, I was lucky to be invited back for the third time in eight years to do a demo there. That would be an occasion where, yes, you've got maybe 40 artists watching you and you think, well, I have to get a likeness, otherwise they're going to think that I'm not a very good portrait artist. But for me, that's the time when I'm thinking, well, I can really have some fun here now and let loose, because this is art, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I haven't got a client or maybe a, a face of a person sitting there where the likeness is really crucial. You know, that, I mean, it is crucial that you get a good li likeness if the person's portrait's going to be in a paper or if the bishop's portrait's hanging, you know, next to bishops of 500 years history, it is very important you get a likeness and you are expected to. Um, I, I like to call it a speaking likeness. I am always striving in my finished work to go for a speaking likeness where it looks as if that person could step off that canvas and talk to you. And when I've worked on a painting for a while, um, if, if it's not there, I carry on. I carry on until I feel as the artist I've got that speaking likeness and then the client will see it. So, um, but in the, in the public portrait projects, there are no changes. Um, that's always been very clear from the start. The sketches have never been for sale. Um, we get what we get in that two hour sitting and I don't change it ever. Uh, no cameras are used. Um, the, the, um, I like to keep the collection myself together. Um, the face of Malibu are all in my studio, all stored away, as will the face of Charleston be. Uh, so, you know, as a painting, as a group, they have a very big energy. As a single sketch, I, I, of course they have an energy, but it's not as good as like when we saw the whole of the face of Ventura assembled that afternoon, which I know you were at too, where I think we had 450 people from the town show up that was a very powerful thing when they were all mounted together um, and that's how I hope um, Malibu will be Charleston and then ultimately what I'd like at the end of this 10 years if, it, if I'm able to keep up the stamina to do it for 10 years I would like them all to come together as one big square of just this unique thread of humanity you know well Joanna thank you very much my pleasure thank you this is George Alger signing off for this segment of Arventura TV. Until we meet again.